Hello everyone, welcome again to Hybrid Accounts. And today we're just going to proceed with property, plant, and equipment. All right, PPE. And actually, uh, subscribe for regular updates if you haven't done that for regular updates. All right, today we're just going to deal with this one section of review of useful life in the residual value. Let's say maybe you have your property, plant, and equipment, and you have reviewed the useful life or the residual value. What should you do after that? Maybe it had used life of eight years, but now the useful life is 10 years. What do I do? Or maybe I expected uh, to dispose it at the end of its useful life for, let's say, $200 million, but now uh, it's $150 million. What do I do about that? All right. A review of the useful life and the residual value of property, plant, and equipment actually should always be carried out at least at each financial year end, right? Yeah, so you have to know if the useful life has changed or not. And then uh, the depreciation charge uh, for the current year and the future period should be adjusted. You have to adjust it for the expectations. You know, for example, depreciation using straight line method is usually called sales or cost minus residual value of a unit life. So if the unit life has changed, you also have to change, right? Now, how do we change that? Let's take a look at that. So the changes here are accounted for as changes in accounting estimates. And so they are applied prospectively. If you say prospectively, we mean for current and future periods is for IS-8. You know, IS-8 speaks of uh, accounting policies, changes in accounting estimates in the prior period errors, right? That's what it speaks of. So when we speak of the estimates, this change, review of the use of life or residual value, or the depreciation method itself is a change in accounting estimates, and so we apply it for the current and the future periods. So do not affect the previous periods, right? Okay, so if the asset now, let's presume if the asset is fully depreciated, let's say that you have an asset, but it is fully depreciated, but still in use. You have depreciated an asset, but it's fully in use. You have several choices to do, right? Let me show you something like this uh, so that I can have uh, a better grasp. Just take a look here. We usually say that depreciation is a straight line equals to cost minus residual value over useful life, right? Okay, so ask yourself here. Let's say you say the asset has a use for five years and five years have passed. It's obvious that the asset will be fully depreciated, right? But it is still in use. So maybe you made a mistake in estimating this useful life. But also maybe you can come and say that, oh, since it has no value in the books, I can just uh, revalue it so, so that it can have a different value, right? Okay, so those are the things that you have to consider. That's why we say in that case, an entity may say revise the use of life is if it is a correction of a prior period error. You can presume that. You can presume that maybe, oh, I made a mistake. The, the use of life was five years, not six years, not seven years. So it would mean that you made an error and you have to correct this. And so if it's a prior period error, as per IS-8, we say that you should apply it retrospectively from when it is practicable. Let me give you a nice example here. Let's presume that you had an asset at cost. You had an asset which had a cost of, uh, let's say, uh, a cost of 100 million. And let's say it, it had a residual value of zero, just presume a zero here. Now, previous, initially I said that you this life was, you this life was say eight years. I just completed the eight years. And let's say uh, several years have passed now. Let's say uh, the depreciation here would have been computed as follows. I would say 100 million minus scrap. Scrap value which is zero over UV five that is eight years, and this would be twelve point five million. And so, if I had the yards, maybe uh in the income statements, I have yards here. Yards, let's say year one, maybe year two, and let's say maybe year three. Just just these three examples. It means that the depreciation that I would have charged would have been as follows, right? Depreciation. I would come here and say 12.5 million, and again, 12.5 million, and again here, 12.5 million, just like this. But now let's say at the end of the third year, 
you realize that the use of life was actually not eight years. Maybe the use of life was only five years. What are you going to do? We realize that, oh, no, the use of life was actually, actually no, not this, was actually five years. So make the difference here. It's not like you have reviewed. We, just, we are saying that initially, from here, it was a mistake. This eight years of reward was a mistake. It could be right or to be a mistake. There was a mistake, and so it was supposed to be five years. This one we call a prior period error. Prior, prior period error. So we have to be able to distinguish between these two. This is a prior period error. In case maybe it was eight years, but now it's five years. But if you take a look, there was no mistake here. That one is, 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 is a highly prospective. But in this case, this is an error. And if it is an error, we say that the precession should actually have been computed at cost 100 million. And the mean, when the value is value zero over five, which would have been 20 million. So having said that, you would realize that these depreciation figures were actually wrong. The right figure here was 20 million, 20 million, and the right figure here was 20 million again, and here I had 20 million. So you find out that, oh, so I just have to make adjustments for the previous periods. So in the previous periods here, it means that if I check the precision of 12.5 instead of the precision of 20, so I would have to add up a more, more the precision of 7.5. The same here, it would be 7.5 million, and here for the current period, it will be 7.5. For the current period, it's easy because of just adjusting in this period. But usually for the for, for prior period errors, actually, you would come and adjust the retained earnings. So this figure will adjust retained earnings, and this figure will adjust retained earnings. And this one for this current period will adjust the current period. So you have to be very careful uh, when dealing with such a thing. All right, so that's what I wanted to speak of here. And now we can proceed. All right, so. The other point is uh, the entity could also choose something like this to revalue an asset. If you revalue an asset, it will rise in value. But obviously, you would also have to determine new use of life, right? All right. So it's just like that. Now, for residual value, let's say residual value has changed. Presume that, you know, the precession equals to cost minus residual value over use of life. But if the cost is less than the residual value, that means you would get something negative. They cannot have a negative depreciation. So for residual value, if it exceeds the carrying amount, the entity will stop charging depreciation. That means it can no longer charge depreciation until the carrying amount is higher, probably in subsequent periods. All right, now let's take a look at the examples now. This is hybrid accounts. Okay, example one. We are told that DG Limited acquired a non-current asset on 1st January 20X4 for $80 million. It had no residual value in the use of life of 10 years. And on 1st January 20X7, the remaining use of life was reviewed and they revised it to be to four years. What will be the depreciation charge for 20X7? Now, solution. I have to note one thing. The use of life, you can be told, the remaining use of life or just the use of life. If you are told the remaining use of life, that means they have already deducted the year that have passed. But you have, if you are just told the use of life, it means the years that have passed have not yet been deducted. Okay, now we, are, we need to determine the depreciation charge for 20x7. Now just ask yourself, the depreciation for the year before the revision of the use of life, we usually take cost minus actually the residual value of the use of life. The cost was 80 million. Residual value zero and use the flight 10 years. So this one would arrive, would remain at $8 million. All right. When did the revision take place? The revision took place on 1st January 20x7. That is actually how many years? You know, from 20x4 to 20x7, three years. So three years have passed. So first of all, I would have to determine the accumulated depreciation for those three years. All right. Mm -hmm. Right, so the depreciation would be 8 million pi pi year times three years, which that would be 24 million. And then I would have the carrying amount, which is cost minus accumulated depreciation. Cost equals to 80 million, accumulated depreciation equals to 24 million. So if we deduct, you remain with 56 million, just like that. That one would be the carrying amount. Okay, now we would have arrived at this year here, 27. So 
regardless of whether this revision has been done, has been done at the beginning or at the end of the year, we have to adjust it. By saying prospective, we usually, we usually consider the current and the future periods, right? Okay, so we can proceed here now. We say that the new depreciation is obtained as follows. Now, to obtain the new depreciation, I would like to make prepare this formula for you so that it can simplify matter. You know, depreciation is usually equal to cost, but right now I will take the current amount. Because it's no longer cost, I've already depreciated it. So it will be the current amount less residual value divided by the remaining unit flight. Carrying amount minus residual value over the remaining useful life. So that's what we should have done. So the carrying amount now is 56 million, but that we are told that the remaining useful life was four years. So I would take 56 minus residual value zero over four, that would be 14 million. And so I could say that the new depreciation would be 14 million dollars. All right, no, not one thing. In case this question said that we, we made an error, we are not supposed to use 10 million from the beginning, we would have, have to consider that. All right, let's proceed with another example. Example two now. We are told that in e Limited acquired an uncurrent asset on 1st January 2024 for 80 million, just as for the previous question, and it had no residual value and a unit life of 10 years. On 1st January 2027, Three years later, the use of life was reviewed and revised to nine years. Now, not one thing. Yeah, we are just saying the useful life, not the remaining use life. Let me tell you one thing here that you have to be careful. Learn to differentiate, learn to differentiate, differentiate between useful life and remaining useful life. Two different things. If you're told you this life, this includes even though the year that have passed, but the remaining of this life is for only the remaining years. So you be careful about this. All right. So the question proceeds and say that what would be what, what would be the depreciation charge for 20x7 for this year after which uh the use of life has changed? All right, so it's like the same way before uh, the use of life change. So the precision for the year before the revision would be cost, that is 80 million, minus cap value zero over unit life, that is 10, and that remain of 8 million. And then I would go to this year, which from S10 to 20x7, it would be three years. So I would say accumulated depreciation equals to three times 8 million accumulated depreciation for three years. And then I will determine the carrying amount now. What would be the carrying amount? Carrying amount, at the first December 26 would be the cost minus the accumulated depreciation that would be 56 million. And after that, now we can go and consider the new depreciation. How do you obtain the new depreciation now? Now the new depreciation, I have the new carrying amount. I have the carrying amount that is 56 million minus residual value, but here it's over nine minus three. Oh, something is wrong here. Let's presume this to be nine. The use fly here. Yeah, all right, all right, it's nine. I didn't see properly. It's nine here, yeah, yeah. So we are told that the use of life was reviewed and revived to nine, to nine years. But remember, how many years have you used in depending on this depreciation? Three years. So nine minus three, and I would remain with six years, right? So if you are told the use of life deduct the previous one, if you are told the remaining use of life means that the three had already, had, had already been deducted. As for the example one, all right. So 56 will be 56 over 6, that would remain with 9.33 million dollars. So that's all about uh, the revision of the flights as well as the revision of the residual value. Thank you very much. And if you don't subscribe, you can do that for regular updates. All right, until next time.